Ah, it's these uh, Newton's third law questions are the questions where either I see people struggle or after people eventually get it right, I get questions over message like, uh, like how is this, you know, sometimes, you know, you are able to, through unlimited patience, um, you are able to just get the correct answer, you, but you're not quite sure why it's correct. So I want you to go over question five and six to go through a reasoning process that you need to go through when identifying the action reaction forces. And I have videos, uh, lecture videos for this, but I just want to start out with a statement that Newton's third law is the most often misunderstood law because a lot of people get sidetracked by the phrasing, the op equal and opposite forces. And as you're looking for action force and reaction force, you start by looking for equal and, equal and opposite forces. And um, that approach often misleads you, then leads you correctly. Because here, if you look at the forward force and you go looking for equal and opposite force, you'll get distracted by the pulling force. And that's not a reaction force paired to the forward force here. So with the Newton's third law, what you have to remember is not the whole equal and opposite thing, which is more confusing than helpful, but the fact that Newton's third law is the law of interaction. It describes the interaction between two objects. So the long version, I like to say, is when um, if or when object A exerts a force on object B, first by pushing, then what Newton's third law says is um, by the same force that A pushes on B, B pushes on A. And the way I feel it is so imagine moving my A, moving from left to right just by itself. There's some amount of effort, not very effortful. But if there's something in the way that A needs to push, then now it's harder for A to move to the right. And that's because it's having to overcome the push from B that's pushing back. I guess with the equal and opposite force that A is pushing. But um, the thing to remember is that there will always be two objects interacting. So. When I look at this for the force, and I'm looking for where is the reaction force, the first thing I'm doing is I'm looking for, okay, what is, um, e what is exerting this for the force? What is pushing the truck forward? And, um, well, the thing that it's towing is not pushing it forward. That would be very weird. And I... Um, might go into detail to think about how does a truck move forward. It moves forward by rolling the tires, tire has contact with the ground, and so the tire is actually pushing the ground backward, and the, oh, I guess the reaction force, or the force is the ground pushing the tire forward, which is pushing the truck forward. So uh, once I got as far as the ground, touching the ground, then um, I can say it's an external force because it's interacting with something that's not part of my system. So the reaction pair to the forward force will be on the ground. So it's not in these diagrams. Um, friction force, that's the force on the car, pulling it backward. And it, that force is going to be exerted by the air and the ground. So that's also external. Towing force. So that's the car, and uh, that's the force pulling the car forward. So what's pulling the car forward? Oh, that's the truck. So the, so then the reaction force must be on the truck. So where are the forces that are on the truck? Um, I guess so. To be in the opposite direction, it must be, it must be pulling the truck backward. And uh, there's only one force here, pulling force. So the reaction force to the towing force is the pulling force. And this is the actual application of Newton's, second, second, Newton's third law, because you know that this towing force and the pulling force are the action-reaction pairs. You can say that these two forces are equal in magnitude. That's the actual application of Newton's second Newton's third law. Um, you don't start out with uh, uh, knowing that two forces are equal. You 
but, but rather after having identified the two forces as action reaction force pairs that allows you to say, oh, because of Newton's third law, they must be equally magnitude. So then, okay, so the pulling force, the, then the, the towing force is the uh, reaction force pair. You can be the correct action reaction uh, um, pair pairing. You can swap the pair and it should still make the sense. Okay, so let me do that. Um, um, so that's question five. Question six is a little bit more, looks complicated because there are more forces, but um, I think the more forces part, it's, uh, uh, it actually just means there's a more external force. Let me uh, point out which ones are external forces. So um, both of these, seven and three, they are external forces because they represent a downward pull of gravity. Gravity is due to Earth. So the reaction force must be on the Earth, which is not in my system. Um, let's see, how do I do this? Um, let me just make sure how it's labeled. Okay, external force is I. So seven and three. They are eyes, um, and the uh, six and two, the upward support force, that's uh, also external force. What's uh, pushing these two objects up? That's uh, the, um, the ground or the table pushing the object up. That's not part of my system. So the reaction force is on the table. It's external force. So um, here the mistake, I guess, I often say, and I'm kind of, you know, trying to trick you into making, is people will, uh, when people don't understand Newton's third law correctly, they will try to pair six with a seven because they see equal and opposite and you get misled by that. Um, so the thing that you should notice is that six and seven are on the same object, so they can't possibly be describing interaction with those two pairs. All right, uh, let's keep going. So, so far four um, external forces. Um, so as the donkey is pulling the cart forward, so one is the force that's pushing the donkey forward. That's beginning to sound like the forward force on the truck. That force has to be coming from the ground. As the donkey's feet pushes the ground back, the ground pushes the donkey's feet forward. That's what gets counted as one there. So that's got to be external. Um, and it's going to be the same deal with the frictional force pulling the cart backward. So eight is going to be another <laughs> external force. So, all right, we are down to just the two forces. Uh, force five, which is pulling the cart forward. And what is pulling the cart forward is the donkey. Um, so the reaction force is on the donkey, and that is four here. So um, that's the only single <laughs> action reaction force pair you will see in this entire diagram. So let me find what those two are and label them. So backward pull on donkey, that should be matched up with the four, the pull on cart. So that's E. And the four, the pull on cart, that should be matched up with the backward pull on donkey, D. So that's it. Um, I'm pretty sure I said in something along that line about the um, interaction. <laughs> Most of the forces should be external force. Let's submit and hope that I got it correctly. All right, so good. Um, so yeah, those are two are Newton's third law questions and um, they're somewhat tricky. A lot of people do struggle. That's why I want you to go over them now.